Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern-day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. Anybody who knows your background knows that you are a a proponent of apostolic education. You're the founding president of Urshan College and Urshan Graduate School of Theology. And at the same time, you're also a graduate of two secular universities, the University of Texas School of Law and Rice University. So you've, you've seen both sides, and you've also been an avid supporter of the UPCI's endorsed Bible colleges. I've heard you uh, issue, offer support for those at, at various times. Now, right now, many apostolic students, they're trying to decide what sort of educational path they want to follow. We have students out there that they feel a a call to ministry, but they're not really sure what that ministry looks like. Does it, you know, is God calling me to be a preacher or something else? Uh, So they, and they also may have academic gifts and other interests that they're, and they're trying to figure out what should they pursue? How do I balance the two of them? What advice would you offer to somebody who's in this situation? And how does somebody decide what educational path they should follow? Let me start by saying education is a tool. It can be used for good or ill. It's a valuable tool, uh, but it has to be used properly. Also, there are various ways of accomplishing the same goal. So yes, I certainly believe in education in various forms, but I don't think you have to be highly educated to do God's will. Uh, Take a look at the apostles. The foremost spokesman of the original apostles was the apostle Peter. He was a fisherman, no formal training, but yet God used him greatly in amazing ways. On the other hand, when God wanted to speak to governors, kings, and according to early church history, even to the Roman emperor, who did he use? The apostle Paul, who did have quite an education. He had an advanced theological training. He was trained at the feet of Gamaliel, who's known from Jewish history as one of the foremost rabbis of the first century. And in Acts chapter 17, Paul quotes when he was preaching to in Athens, especially to philosophers, uh, he he interacted with Greek um, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers and the the council at Athens. Um, He quoted from at least two, perhaps three Greek philosophers and poets. And in his epistles, there are a couple other places where he quoted from uh, Greek poets. So I don't know if he just learn these from the common culture or whether he just read them on his own or whether he had a course of study. But apparently he took time to learn the culture and some of the sources. And in a time when books were all handwritten and so all manuscripts are rare and costly, it it seems that he did acquire not only scripture, but he asked for the books and the parchments. There seems to be he had scrolls of scripture, but also Scrolls are maybe uh, books of other sources. So it appears to me that Paul had advanced training or education, whether some of it was self-taught, I'm not sure, in both the, the Old Testament or Jewish beliefs, but also in secular culture. So I, I see that as a model. God can use all kinds of people. In fact, God needs all kinds of people. So I'm not here to say everybody needs a certain kind of education, or if you don't have a certain education, you're not as important or you're deficient. I don't want to say any of that. God can use everyone. However, I would say, and I think this is scriptural, 2 Timothy uh, 2, 15, study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing uh, the word of truth. And of course, the word study is not focus narrowly in the Greek on reading or book study, but it means be diligent. But nevertheless, I think the Bible would certainly support you should be diligent in seeking truth, knowledge, training yourself, educating yourself. If you feel like God has called you to preach, you need to prepare yourself. God's calling may be real, but just because you're called doesn't mean you're automatically qualified. You must qualify yourself. And the scriptural qualifications for ministers of the gospel, according to 1 Timothy 3, Titus 1, meaning apt to teach, capable of teaching. So you must study to be a good teacher. 
able to handle the scripture, able to handle the doctrine, not only to preach inspirationally, fervently with anointing, but able to explain the word of God and instruct people carefully in the word of God. So here's what I'd say in our culture, particularly, I'm talking about North America, education is highly desirable for a productive life and for careers and jobs. Uh, people that do have education training will uh, generally earn a lot more and have more successful lives, but not one size fits all. So here's what I would tell every young people in our, every, every young person in our culture, I think probably getting a high school education is is basic and minimum. Everybody should aspire for that. And for some reason you don't have that, uh, consider the GED the equivalent. But then from there, I say you can consider, not everybody should go to college, although that's often promoted. I think you should consider vocational school, or if you, if you know your career or your vocation, maybe on the job training, getting a good job that trains you in the area of your interest, in your vocation, that might be sufficient. So consider vocational training or on the job training. I do think many people should consider college. And I do think many people should consider Bible college. And in the middle, we have Urshan College, which uh, has the features of a Bible college, but it also has other majors and it's accredited. And we do have uh, Christian Life College in Stockton is also accredited, Stockton, California. Uh, we have other colleges that I understand are seeking accreditation. Uh, and, and we have a variety of colleges. Now, just from my background, as you mentioned, I graduated from Rice University, University of Texas, University of South Africa. I taught at the University of Houston. I taught at Austin Community College. So I've been involved with many secular colleges, but I also uh, taught for five years at Jackson College of Ministries, one of our Bible colleges at the time. I taught classes over the years for Texas Bible College. In fact, I taught the first extension courses called Excel for, for TBC. I taught um, modular class for Apostolic Bible Institute in St. Paul, Minnesota. I did uh, spiritual emphasis week or whatever they call it for Indiana Bible College in Indianapolis for Gateway College of Evangelism in St. Louis. I taught guest lectures for, for Gateway. And so I, and at Kent Christian College, I taught, I think it was 90 hours total of video instruction for their distance learning program. So one way or the other, I've been involved in most of our Bible college as a district superintendent. I was responsible for, for overseeing the startup of our first Spanish Bible college, uh, CTM. So I believe in all kinds of education. Now, as a general superintendent, I believe we need all these options. So I think there should be a seamless whole. And here's what I mean. So you could start with Purpose Institute, which is training in the local church. And we also have, uh, based in California, um, CTSI, ministerial training and ministerial being broadly defined, lay leadership as well as ministerial leadership. And in uh, Alberta, Canada, we have the Genesis Institute. So we've got three endorsed projects that give you um, local church-based training. But then what if you want to go on? You can use those credits to help you towards Bible college or Urshan college. Or what if you want specifically training for preaching or for music ministry or some other leadership in a local church? Well, we have a variety of Bible colleges, and I think I've mentioned most of them. If if I've omitted any, it's uh, I'm not thinking of them at the moment. But, uh, well, there's North Texas uh, college there in the Dallas area. And uh, we also have a new training institute approved in Tampa. So some are training institutes. Uh, some are true colleges, Bible colleges. And so um, I, I think especially for those who aspire for leadership in the church, those are great options. They can also be good options just for general life experience. And then as I said, Urshan College combines the best of both. And then Urshan Graduate School is our only graduate school. So another, and that is also for, for ministry and lay leadership. And so that way, if you maybe had a, a secular college or a Bible college, but then you want to go on to more specialized training for a master's degree, and soon there will be a doctoral program, then UGST is the natural choice. So my goal is if you just want specialized training in the local church, we've got several options. If you decide you want to go to more formal training, we have Bible colleges. And so can you can use the credits at one step to go the other. If you want an accredited degree, we have an option. If you want a master's degree, you have an option. 
And so a lot of it's individualized. Now, if you want a professional career in geology, probably you need to go to secular college because none of our Bible colleges or Urshan College will offer a degree or in accounting or law, you know. So depending on your career goals, so you might start with a community college and then go to Bible college or Urshan College or you might start Urshan College and then go to a master's program in another field or go to go to a Bible college or Urshan College for a year or two to get an apostolic grounding. So there's so many paths that I don't want to prescribe any one. I will say, though, there's a big debate, secular versus Bible. Uh, and here's what I learned as pastor. Of course, in my personal life, I navigated secular college. But I think my personal experience, which I believe I I did a, a segment on this uh, some time back. You did. Let me let me stop you real quickly. You said in your personal life you uh, gravitated towards secular college. That was because you wanted to pursue something that careers was a, a that, secular career. Yes. Right. But I would say if you do pursue secular college, you must make church first. Stay engaged in your local church, committed to your local church, and involved in personal ministry. That becomes the proper context for handling secular college. As a pastor, here's what I learned. I had many of our young people, young adults, and even not so young adults pursue from associate's degree to bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctorate, all that. And here's what I learned. If they stayed in the area and faithfully attended our local church and then went to a college within driving distance, it was a very high retention rate, actually even a little higher than those who didn't go to college. And I think perhaps because we were more intentional, uh, and also because maybe in our culture, at least, that indicated a more discipline. Uh, so, in, so college was not a detriment. In fact, if anything, it was an advantage. I also learned if I sent them away to Bible college, and I sent them to, I think, six of our Bible colleges. So I was a supporter, and uh, later, of course, Urshan College, but at the time, Urshan Graduate School. If I sent them to any of our Bible colleges or Urshan, Again, very high retention rate. But if I sent them off to another city, to a secular school, a very high dropout rate for the church. Even though I tried to tell them, here's a good church to go to, and I would call the pastor and say, I'm sending this person to you, try to connect them. But sadly, if they moved off out of their local church culture, now some were successful, so I'm not uh, totally against that. I'm just saying there was a higher dropout rate, not for our local church specifically, but for the kingdom of God, for the apostolic faith. So that's something that must care, be carefully considered. If your career and life goals mean you need secular training, I suggest you explore colleges in your area. Or if you feel the right one is somewhere off, you make an con intentional connection to a local church and pastor and become committed to that church, faithful not only in attendance, but involvement in ministry. Don't use college as an excuse that you can't be involved. Or you might consider, even if you need secular degrees for your career goals, you might consider going a year or two to Urshan College or a Bible college to make sure you get grounded in your faith on an intellectual basis. So when you face secular college, you already have some ammunition or you already have a foundation. Um, and so I would recommend that you be very intentional with, with your pastor and if your parents are in the church and plan something that not merely considers what's best in a secular way, but what's best for your spiritual life. And so I'll close with this. When I, when I graduated from high school, I, I had a national merit scholarship and, and, and I had a lot of advantages and I had offers to some of the major universities on the East coast, Ivy league schools. At that time, we did not have strong churches in most of those areas. So my parents really were reluctant for me to go. Well, I found one of the top schools in the nation, often called the Harvard of the South Rice University. It was in Houston. There were a lot of good churches. So my parents strongly advised me in that direction. And so I did get a scholarship there. I went there. I was happy that I did. They also were very reluctant for me to live on campus because of the secular environment. So I was able to rent a room from a family in the church and commute. And that proved very beneficial. To give you a simple illustration, I had to be on campus for the first week of orientation. And sure enough, the orientation was over. Our mentor, the upperclassman was leading us. He said, well, we're all going to go out 
um, to a bar and it was a topless bar. So there were a few of us who are Christians. We opted out. We, we found out what was going, but the whole, I was 17 year old kid, first time away from home, 7,000 miles away from home. And had I not had convictions and training and intentionally made a decision, I would have ended up at a topless bar. Um, even though I was underage for, for even drinking. So my point is that secular culture and especially, uh, campus dorm culture can be very detrimental. So if someone is going to secular college, you should certainly plan, uh, to safeguard yourself in these areas and make wise decisions of the right school, the right living environment, the right companions, you know, the right friends and the right church. So I believe that education can be a great tool. I believe there are a variety of options. And my goal as a general superintendent, which I'm happy to tell you, is I'm not trying to get everybody to go to one school or one form. I want to have options all across the spectrum so that all of our, that we could provide something for all of our apostolic young people. Thank you for listening to this episode of Apostolic Life in the 21st Century. If you enjoy this podcast, please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. We also appreciate it when you share apostolic life in the 21st century with a friend or family member. Finally, join us again next time as we look at how the Bible applies to everyday life.